All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans. Now it's Lucky Whitehead on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. start the night. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. Brian Cushing, the linebacker, in on the tackle. And that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, holding them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. On second down, Elliott. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. So a penalty that can frustrate a coach so much, a mental error, and it'll back him up five yards. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. And looking at Houston defensively, they've got a dime set. Six DBs on third. Now Prescott. He's got time. He sets to fire deep. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, they went for the big play there. But that drop could really hurt their momentum. Now the six-year man, Chris Jones, on to punt it away. Back deep for Houston, Keith Mumphrey. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And here comes the Texans now. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Now Whedon. And his first pass is incomplete. C.J. Fedorowicz, the intended receiver. And that'll make it second and ten. And on second and ten now. Here's Whedon. Dumps it complete to Miller. And he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. So the pickup there for Lamar Miller, and he actually shredded his current team last year when he played against him, 175 yards, another 61 in the air and two touchdowns. I guess that's a classic example of if you can't stop him, go get him, put him on your team. Lamar Miller, a big-time pickup for the Texans. Four down, four down. Here we go now. Green. Again, it's Miller. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. 
Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. They'll try to run for it with Miller. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Now a run. This is Alfred Blue. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Hopkins on the grab over the middle. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. They go play action here on first down. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. He's got Fuller. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. A route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. On third down, Miller. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. They keep it with Miller on first down. <laughs> And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On second down, here's Miller. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Ah, oh, yes, that's today's NFL defensive tackle. Not just a space eater anymore. A guy with agility, movement skills, who can rush the passer and make plays in the offensive backfield. A long drive here. Play 12 coming up for the offense. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Hey. 
And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And it's now 3-0 Texans. So they get the field goal, but part of that was a 14-play drive to get the three. Normally, when you hold the ball that long, run that many plays, you end up in the end zone. There's a breakdown on the defense. Something happens. In this case, that didn't. But really good ball control by the offense. They're hoping that they can wear them down if they keep having drives like that. Now it's Nick Novak back out following his field goal to send it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And out now come the Cowboys. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. They start on the ground with Elliott. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. When people see Vince Wilfork, they don't think about his versatility, do they? But we've seen that throughout his career, where he's actually played some defensive end as well as his expected defensive tackle and nose tackle positions. Strength, great, great quickness inside. That allows him to make plays in the offensive backfield. Absolutely a run stopper. They go to Elliott again. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Now the fifth-year man, this is Lance Dunbar. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. And now the Texans are going to stop it as they signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Here's Mumphrey. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Texans take possession. And now out comes Houston. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Again. Exactly. Ah! Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete normally he's pretty reliable he usually catches what's thrown to him on that play he simply dropped it offense still needing 10 yards second down Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Completes this one to Cecil Shorts. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make it third down. So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. Now Whedon. Time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. It's the rookie from Oklahoma, Charles Tapper, coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down.
Now a man who turned 40 back in August. He might not like me for that one, but it's true. Shane Leckler, the 40-year-old, on to punt it away. Lucky Whitehead back deep for Dallas. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Now Prescott. He finds his target, Terrence Williams. And all the way down to the 24-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 56 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. Bryant, the lone receiver left. Here's Prescott. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, and that'll make it second and ten. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll look to throw here. And there's a flag on the play. I really don't know where to go with this one. He caught the pass, but in the opposite direction towards his own end zone. That's not one you get every game. to Cole Beasley and he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22 yard line now whistles come in we're going to get a timeout here by the offense so that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime Tough spot for the offense. Third and eight. Back to throw again. Out left side here to Bryant. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will tie things up as we head toward halftime. And that three-point tally now means we are even here toward the end of the second quarter. And what a way to end the half. Put some points on the board, feel better about yourselves as a team, and you're right back to even. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out 
to the 25. And now out comes Houston. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. And we will likely not see another play here as they take the knee and head into the intermission all tied. So we've reached halftime in a low-scoring affair, just a pair of field goals. 3-3 is our score. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports halftime report. Larry? And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And now out comes Houston. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Second half begins with a run from Miller. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They'll run it again with Miller. Penalty marker is down here. And he's brought down. I mean, that was an example of why offensive linemen might want rearview mirrors at times, because you have your assignments to block, but if you can see what's going on in the backfield and maybe the guy carrying the ball is headed in another direction, it might change what you do up front. But if they can't see that and he's not in sync with what they're doing up front, well, this is when you end up with plays like this. A bad one for the offense, a really good one for the defense. Here we go. Three, five, five, After the penalty, it's Miller. No oh, nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. Eight yards here, so that gets him back within striking distance. And now it's third down. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. Charles Tapper in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Fielded just inside the 30. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. A look at the offense now here. Coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job. Yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Seven yards on the pick up there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Three yards to go here on second down. One man in the backfield, Elliott. He's going to get the football. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The previous play was a nice run, so they came back with the draw. I think they were trying to fool the defense into thinking they would throw the ball and wanted to run it again. Unsuccessful, but this team is definitely showing they want to keep it on the ground. And defensively going with a dime set, six DBs on third and four. 
complete to Jason Witten. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. And that's why defensive coaches preach swarming to the football. It's usually going to take more than one guy to get that big man down. And it did right there. Multiple broken tackles, but they eventually get him down. They'll come out in the pistol. A first down carry by Elliott. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Here we go. One, nine, nine. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And some room to work. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Give him eight on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. And the offense facing a third and six. Bryant, the lone receiver left. Now Prescott. And he's going to be taken down. He's sacked on the final play of this third quarter. Back now in Houston. It's been a tight, low-scoring affair thus far. 3-3 is our score heading into the fourth. And Bailey able to knock it through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. So we still wait on the first touchdown of the game, but his second field goal makes this now a 6-3 score. And this would be the definition of winning ugly. Now you need to continue to ride your defense and hope that you can make this fourth quarter lead stand up. Now after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. A beautiful fake. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now Whedon. And he's got it over the middle. Fedorowicz. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Second down and four. Here's Whedon. And he's got it. Fedorowicz. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. to throw here on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. And now here come the Cowboys. They had fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Four yards remaining now on second down. Bryant, the lone receiver left. Here's Prescott. And here's the first NFL reception for the rookie, Ezekiel Elliott. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, 
be aware a ball may come your way. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And this is caught at the 8. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. And the offense here just looking to stay in bounds, complete the short passes, and put this game on ice. Stop just outside the five at the six. It'll be a three yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. Field, Elliott. Now back to throw. That's caught at the two. And now the Texans are going to stop it as they signal for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. some extra. And now the Texans want to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And Bailey able to knock it through. And they continue to lead in the battle of field goals here. It's now 9-3. to three. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. On the return, here comes Keith Mumphrey. <laughs> and a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when okay. they only gave up the field yeah. goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach would just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it down field, punching the end zone without turning it over. Well, pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? He'll look to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. They'll look to throw. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Bring up second down. Unable to 
connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Shorts has got it. Give him three on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. They may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. They're still in search of the first down after that last completion. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. Back to throw. Finding time. But it's caught by Shorts. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. And now they're in the hurry up. He's back to throw. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. A wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. This one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Well, here we go now, an extra defensive back in there on third and ten. Now Whedon, and incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. And not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Try it here. He's back to throw. And the rookie Braxton Miller with it. That one good for 10 yards. And they're able to move the chains as they convert on fourth and long. And they're going to speed things up here. And the spike comes now with just under 40 ticks left. Just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Let's go! Green! He'll look to throw. And to the left side, Fedorowicz has it. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Got the hand caught up in the grill of the face mask. 15-yard penalty. So tough for a defender. You're trying so hard to make a play. And the way that these offensive guys can move around, sometimes your hand gets into the wrong place. tackle but then quickly brought down it'll be a gain of four and it'll be second and goal and the offense moving quickly to the line and movement here by one of the Texans up front in comes the flag And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They isolate Hopkins on the left side. Back to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown. And now they're an extra point away from winning this thing in the final seconds. And now we've got a tie game after that touchdown. And you and I both know what that means. Extra point. In this situation, this little time left 
takes on some extra emphasis, doesn't it? It does indeed. Now inside the final minute, can they get it and hold on? Nick Novak on now for the extra point. And they have got the lead. Novak on. He'll send this one away following the touchdown. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. So you're right there, but obviously the clock is not your friend. How do you handle this situation? You're thinking two plays. One, to get yourself in position for the second one. Whether you're able to get into field goal range or you have to try another deep pass, another Hail Mary, but you're trying to get the first one to a receiver, get out of bounds, and give yourself a chance to set things up for an easier shot at it. Let's see if they can do it. Might be easier said than done. He's going to let it fly. And this is caught at the 20. And he'll be down deep in Houston territory. 